to give a huge thank you to all the supporters that have been supporting this channel and the new viewers who have been watching and liking my videos and the subscribers. Thank you so much. Your support means the world to me. Feel free to tune into my live stream and just say hi. I love interacting with you guys, so I'll see you there. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to kill the two hardest bosses in God of War Ragnarok New Game Plus on the hardest difficulty in 7 seconds with just 3 hits using the strongest build in the game. Whenever you click on my videos, always read the description and pinned comment. I have useful information and often answers to your questions there. In this video, I will only cover these two amulets. The rest are I've already covered in a different video and I have a link to that in the pinned comment. It will be titled Tutorial with a link. Once you click the link, it will take you to a video titled How to Kill the Nine 2 Seconds Tutorial. In that video, there are timestamps. The three timestamps I want you to watch are Scorched Earth Tutorial, Enchantment Explanation, and Secret Ingredient. This build will not work unless you fully understand everything about this skill tree. If you're not an expert with this attack, then please click the tutorial link in the pinned comment. Then you can skip to the Scorched Earth tutorial timestamp. Alright, first things first, this build is meant for New Game Plus. And if you look at the top left, my character is level 10. Now how do you get to level 10? You need to have everything upgraded to level 10. If your weapon is not level 10, you need to get Primal Flames. My weapon, the attachment, they're all level 10 as you can see. Same with my armor. If you copy my exact build, but your stats look different than mine, that's because you haven't collected all the Yggdrasil dues, the Nornir chest, and there's a side quest that gives you plus 5 on every stat. Those are all permanent boosts. For the Leviathan Axe and the Blades of Chaos, we're using Fortified Frost Knob and Radiant Warden Handles, both for the Strength and Cooldown stat. For the Dropnir Spear, we're using Mighty Olympic Serrata for the Cooldown and Lock stat, as well as the Detonator's Might ability. Detonating Throne Spears has a moderate luck chance to increase Strength and Stagger Resistance. The shield we're going to be using is the Dauntless Shield for the extra cooldown stat as well as the Shield Bash it has. Our Rond of Obliteration is the choice of attachment, it has the extra stats we need. And for the Valak we have Hilt of Whole Food for the Realm Shift. Now for one of the most important parts of this build, it's your Rage Valor. If you read the thing it says, time it right before being hit to negate the incoming attack, you gain an additional burst of healing, and most importantly, grant a melee attack bonus. If you do this correctly and you use it like it's a parry, then you're going to get a gift of strength that should show on the left side of your screen. For our chest armor, we're using the Berserker Curious. When we activate our Realm Shift Relic, we're going to get Soulless Warrior. Using a relic massively increases the damage of Kratos' melee attacks, but also the damage received for a duration. For our wrist armor, we're using the Gauntlet of Ares, because whenever our Rage Meter is full and we activate Rage, we get a 25% damage increase. I'm going to demonstrate that really quickly. You see I have four Rage Bars filled right now, and then once I activate Rage, I get Enraged Might. And then once I have three Rage Bars right now, it's no longer going to activate. I'm going to show that in just a second. Okay, Rage Bar is no longer full. No Enraged Might. For our waste armor, we're using the Hunter's Belt for the extra strength and cooldown stat, as well as the 10% range damage increase. I'm not sure why, but I'm pretty sure the range damage 10% affects our Whiplash. Next, I'm going to cover one of the strongest amulets in the game. It's the Boon of Valor. You get a powerful buff to strength. All you have to do is activate your Rage, and then you'll see Valor's Bloodthirst on the left side of your screen as a buff. So I'm not the person that came up with the burden of weaponry strategy. It was actually a YouTuber named Lex Lapid. I'll have his name and YouTube video in the description, so please go check him out. A reason for using weapon of burdenry is because of the Scorched Earth skill from the Blades of Chaos. It says striking an enemy during its attack with Scorched Earth significantly increases the damage dealt. With that burden, it makes it so that once we attack them during their attack, we don't actually stagger them and break them out of their attack. They'll continue to uh, perform the attack, so we're going to continue to keep attacking them during their attack and getting more and more damage. So overall, you're not actually doing less damage, you're doing more. I'm going to demonstrate that really quickly. Good. I'll see you okay, more. if she's in the middle of an attack, we have the burden of weapon Done. on. She's still attacking. Now if we take it off, she's no longer attacking. She breaks her out of the animation. One of the main reasons people can't seem to replicate the amount of damage I do is because they don't understand how to use Freya properly. The accessories I'm using, the first one is the Knock Proficiency, where every third runic arrow fires an additional three arrows. So in my videos, I usually fire my runic arrow, and as you can see, she just fired three. So that means the next third one is going to be three. So I fire one, two, and then I go into the fight. And then the first runic arrow I fire is going to shoot three at the same time. To make it simple, it depends where you save the fight at. So for me, if I were to go to this save, where I'm about to fight Gana, it should be the second arrow that fires three at the same time. That's why you see me throwing my spear and then shooting one one arrow. No 
and then I go into the fight. So the next time I fire an arrow, it should be three right there. The next accessory we're going to be using is the Reckless Empowerment for a little bit of extra damage when our runic arrows are fully depleted, but you can swap that out for Sigil Amplification. Whichever one works for you, feel free to change it to that. Now for the most important accessory, it's the Sigil Punishment. Melee attacks against an enemy afflicted with Hex deal significantly increased damage. First, I'm going to show it without it. You can see it wasn't very much damage. Now I'm going to afflict her with Hex and see the difference. Another quick tip with the spear is if you throw it and then you go up to her and then you blow it up, she's not going to do anything. However, if you were to throw it and you lock onto her and then you blow it up, she will fight you. I'm going to try to explain everything as I go do it. The first thing I do is throw the spear, shoot the sigil arrow, that's pretty self-explanatory. So the way this fight starts, she's going to either do one of two attacks. She's either going to swing her blades at you or she's going to do a jump kick. I'm hoping for the jump kick because that one's easier for this one. Good. I'll see you pay so jump, throw the spear, switch weapon, rage, shoot all the things, throw them all, shield back. And that's the end of the fight. I'm gonna try to explain that a little bit slower this time. So I wait for her to do her attack before I use detonator's might just so I could have the belt last longer, but you could get away with do activating it earlier, it doesn't matter. And after it's activated, I press left on my d-pad to switch to the blade, and then I press swipe up to get my rage. The reason I changed the setting is because I find it way more convenient. If you could look at the touchpad shortcut, swipe up is Spartan Rage. However, swipe down is Shield Strike. And I find that also easier to Shield Strike rather than tapping L1 twice. It's much faster for me. I just keep swiping down. Let's see if she does the other attack this time. There, she did the other attack. That's the other attack she could do. Shoot the spear and the sigil arrow. Run up to her and wait for her to perform her kick. She's about to do the kick. The first thing we're going to do is blow up our detonator's might and then get the buff with triangle. And then we're going to press left on the d-pad to switch to our blades of chaos. Do that really quickly. Okay, now that I've pressed all those buttons, she's about to hit me with the kick. I need to parry that kick with the Valor Rage. Unless you parry it, you're not going to get buff of strength. So it's really important you do that. Okay, I parried that. Next thing I'm going to do is spam all my runic arrows with Freya by tapping square as many times as I can. And then I'm going to activate my realm shift. Realm shit is activated, and next I'm gonna do the shield bash and then the whiplash. She's in the middle of her attack, so she's taking a ton of damage. And then R3 finisher. Simple. Again, if you're having trouble with the score charts ability or the flame whiplash, I have an entire video explaining how to do it step by step. I'll have a link in the description or the pinned comment, so please read those. It'll be titled Tutorial and it'll take you and the link will take you to how to kill Gana in two seconds. There will be timestamps, so please read those as well. Once the fight starts, make sure you're moving to the left, because if you're standing still, Kratos just doesn't do anything for some reason in this fight. Shoot the spear and the sigil arrow. I'm not sure what it looks like if I stand still. Kratos doesn't even have his weapon on. You can see I pressed up anything and nothing works. This fight's a bit more RNG based because uh, at the beginning if he doesn't attack you, if he does the running away, then you might want to restart. And again, the same goes after you parry him with the rage. If he, if he starts running away, it doesn't work. The entire time you need him to be aggressive and attack you. You're going to start the fight off, throw the spear, shoot the sigil arrow because the next sigil arrow is going to be three for me. There it is. As soon as the fight starts, move Kratos to the left. Don't make him stand still. And the next thing I'm going to do is lock onto the boss. And then after that, I'm going to quickly press triangle to blow up detonators might and get the buff. And then right away, I'm going to press left on the D-pad to switch to Blades of Chaos. This happens really quickly. Move to the left triangle, weapon swap. Now, if he did that correctly, Wolf was going to be in the middle of an attack, or he might be running away. If he's running away, then you already failed. You're going to have to start all over again. Now that he's in the middle of an attack, you have to parry that attack with your Rage. With Valor Rage, if you parry it properly, you should get Gift of Strength. If you don't do this correctly, you're not going to get Gift of Strength on the left side of your screen. So make sure you get it right. Right after you parry his attack, start spamming Square and shooting all of your Runic Arrows from Freya. Now that I've parried his attack, I'm going to start spamming Square and shooting all my Runic Arrows. Now, if you did that correctly, he is going to start attacking again, but he might also run away. If he runs away, again, you failed. You need to start all over again. The next thing we're going to do is activate Realm Shift, and hopefully he's in the middle of an attack. And then all we have to do is Shield Bash and Whiplash, and then he should die. 
Again, it's a pretty RNG based thing, so keep trying, keep at it. Good luck. I'll see you 